In this video, we're going to take a look at how to find density of a substance, in this case, density of a liquid, using a graphical approach. So we've collected some data, and we've graphed it here using a scatter plot. Um, the graph shows the mass of the substance on the y-axis, and on our x-axis, the volume in milliliters. And we can see that this graph shows one, two, three, four, five data points, and they pretty much form a nice straight line. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a ruler, a straight edge, and I'm going to include a line of best fit. This data is very, very linear. All of these points pretty much fall on a perfect line. If it was more realistic, if it was data from a real experiment, you'd probably have points above the line, points below the line as well. Now, I did that pretty quickly, and someone might argue that my one, two, three points here in the middle, four points are all slightly below the line of best fit, so maybe I drew that line just a little bit too high, but uh, we'll still go for it. You, in a line of best fit done by hand, you want the line to go through the center of your points. So you, if you had a point above the line, that would be okay if there was another point somewhere about symmetrically below the line somehow. So you want the line to go through the center of the points when you're drawing a line of best fit. So now that I've got the line drawn, I'm going to ignore the data points. So I'm no longer going to consider the one, two, three, four, five points. And instead, I'm going to take two points that I myself am going to put on that line. What I like to do is find some points that are easy to read the coordinates of. For example, 10 milliliters. If I use that as an x value, I'll just go up and I'll put a dot right there on the line and I'll circle it. And now I can give the coordinates of that point. I know that the x value is 10.0 milliliters. And the y coordinate, I'll have to estimate it. It's like reading a graduated cylinder, so 5, 6, 7, 8. It's between 7 and 8, and it looks to be about halfway. So I'll say 7.5 grams. Okay, now, I didn't say halfway just because I was uh, picking the middle. It actually does look like it's halfway between the two tick marks. Now, another point reasonably far away from my first point may be over here at 40 milliliters. So I'm choosing 10 and 40, and that's arbitrary. You could have picked any two points. So there we are. There's my second point, and I'll put a dot and circle it just to highlight which points are, are on the line. And the coordinates of that point are 40.0. That's the x value. I chose it to be exactly 40, so 40.0, comma. And the y value here turns out to be very nice. It's right on a tick mark. It's on the tick mark just below 30. So on this scale, that would be 29.0 grams. Okay, so there's my two points. So there's step one choose two points on the line and record their coordinates. Now, to find the average density of this substance, what I'm going to use is the slope of the line. The slope of the line is uh, related to the steepness of the line, and it's equal to the average density. Now, in your math class, if you haven't already done so, you'll quickly learn how to find slopes of lines. The symbol for slope is the letter M, and the formula for this is delta Y over delta X. The little triangle symbol is the Greek letter delta, and it means change in. So the change in the Y values divided by the change in the X values. Now, you can also say here Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so that's what change in y values means, the difference in y values, and change in x values, the difference in x values. Looking back at my graph, I had these two points labeled. I can choose either point and call that the first point. Just because we read left to right, I'll call this point over here on the left the first point. That means this is x1, and this is y1. So there's the x and the y value for the first point. Up here is x2 and y2. Those are the x and y values of the second point on the line. Now I'm simply going to take my y2 and y1 values and bring them down here and put them in my formula. So y2, the point at the top of the here, was 29.0. So 
29.0 minus y1, which was 7.5, over x2, which was 40.0, the x-coordinate of the second point, minus 10.0, equals, if we grab a calculator, if you have to, 29 minus 7 would be 22, so 29 minus 7.5 is 21.5, over 40 minus 10 is 30.0. Now the units here are kind of important. We've been leaving them out here, but the y values on the graph were masses, and their units were grams. So the numerator of this fraction, the difference in y values, is actually grams, and the x-axis was volume in milliliters. So this difference in x values represents milliliters. And now if we grab a calculator, 21.5 divided by 30 is 0 0.72, or 717, I guess. I've got three digits in the top number and three digits on the bottom number, so I'm going to keep three digits in my density, three significant digits, 0 0.717 grams per milliliter. Okay, remember the, that the zeros at the beginning of a measured number are not significant, so 717 would be the three significant digits. So there's the density of this liquid calculated from the slope of the line through the points on a graph of mass versus volume. Now there was another way we could have found the slope uh, using a very sim similar but slightly different. If we drew that line again through our data points, There's our line of best fit, and if we, why don't we just for the sake of time use the same two points. So I'm going to go from 10 up here, and I'm going to go at 40 up there. So there's my two points that I've selected, and I'm going to just use my ruler to create a right triangle. So what I'm going to do from the first point I drew, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. This will be one of the legs of my right triangle. I'm going to go right over to 40, and then straight down vertically from the second point until it meets that horizontal line. There's the second leg of the right triangle. So there's my right triangle that I've created. In that triangle, the bottom leg is called the run between those two points on my line of best fit. So between this point and this point, this horizontal line is called the run. The vertical line here, this leg of the right triangle, is referred to as the rise. So if you were walking, if you were a person standing here on the slope and you were walking up like this, by the time you reached this point up at the top, you would have risen by this amount, so that's why that's called your rise, and you would have moved horizontally this distance, and that's called your run. The slope of the line is another way to, to, to say it. So slope is, again, average density. Now, understand that in this case, it's average density because our y-axis has mass and our x-axis has volume. Mass over volume is density. If those were different, this would not represent density. So slope here is average density. And a formula for slope similar to the one we just did is called rise over run. So there's a simple way to think of slope, the rise divided by the run. So now looking at our graph, let's figure out what the rise and what the run are. The point that we started at had a y value, if you recall, at 7.5. So this point over here on the side started off at 7.5. That's this point here where we're starting on the y-axis. We rose up to this point where its y-value was 29.0. So 29.0 is the y-value up at that second point. So if we look at that from 7.5 up to 29, we can say here that the rise is 29.0 minus 7.5 is 21.5 grams. There's the rise. Do the same thing here for the run. It started here at 10.0 and it finished here at 40.0. So 
so the run would be 40.0 minus 10.0, the run is 30.0, and in this case, milliliters, because it's the volume in milliliters. So if you take a look at what we've just done, we're essentially doing the same thing. We're subtracting these two y values, but now we're calling that the rise. Then we're subtracting the two x values, and we're calling that the run. So now when we put our rise over run, you'll see that we're essentially doing the same thing. We're taking 21.5 grams divided by 30.0 milliliters, and so we're going to get the same answer, 0.717 grams per milliliter as our average density. The advantage of this approach is that it's a little less algebraic. There's no x's and y's in the approach, and the original method was more of an algebraic approach. It uses these symbols here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and it recognizes that the two points had x and y values. Notice there's no picture drawn in the original one either. There's no right triangle created. On a test, you'd be welcome to use either one of those methods, but certainly the more sophisticated approach, the one that you would see later in your pre-calculus math classes, is this one here. In a physics class, perhaps a biology or chemistry class, you might also encounter this, uh, this simpler approach of rise divided by run for finding slope. So on your test this week, on your exam, you might be given a graph like that. You might be given the line of best fit, or you'd have to draw it yourself like I did. Pick any two points on the line, and then go find the average density by finding the slope of that line. I hope that helps with your studying. Good luck.